the budget workshop meeting of February 3rd, 2021 to order at 7.04 p.m. Will everybody please rise for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance, pledge allegiance to the flag, the flag of, United of the United States, States of, America, of America and, and, to, the and Republic, to the Republic for which we stand, stand, one nation, one nation under God, God, indivisible, indivisible with liberty, liberty and justice, and justice for all. all. Will the city clerk please read the Open Publics Meeting Act? This budget workshop meeting was called pursuant to the provisions of the Open Public Meetings Law. Notices of this meeting was published in the record on January 28, 2021. In addition, a copy of the notice was posted on the city's website, the bulletin board in the municipal building, and filed in the office of the municipal clerk on aforementioned date. Notice on the bulletin board has remained continuously posted. Please take notice that in accordance with the Open Public Meetings Act and NJSA 10-4-6, at SEEK and Local Finance Notice 2020-21, new emergency regulations, remote public meetings held during a declared emergency issued by the Local Finance Board on September 24th, 2020, and NJAC 5-39-1, emergency remote meeting protocol for local public bodies, establishing standard protocols, the City Council of the City of Englewood adopted resolution number 47-1-19-21, authorizing the um, City of Englewood Schedule of Council Budget Workshop meetings for 2021 to be held remotely via Zoom. Members of the public who wish to participate in this meeting may do so by calling or clicking on the link below at 7 p.m., the link on our website, or by dialing 929-205-6099. The meeting ID for this meeting is 862-1257-6968, and the passcode is 461-379. Individuals calling into this number will be able to fully participate in the meeting, including providing public comment. Public comments may be submitted by 3 p.m. on the date of the meeting, either through written letter or email to the meeting at cityofenglewood.org. All written comments shall be read during the public forum portion of the meeting and shall be subject to the same time limitations for public speaking. Duplicative comments shall be noted for the record and summarized. The agenda for the meeting can be found on the city's website at www.cityofenglewood.org. A separate meeting will be used if closed session is required. Proper notice having been given, the municipal clerk is directed to include the statement in the minutes of this meeting. Will the city clerk please do the roll call? Councilman Cohen? Yes. Councilman Hamer? Here. Councilwoman Marin? Here. Councilman Rosenzweig? Here. Council President Cobb? Here. Okay, absent of prior notice is Mayor Michael Wilds. And also present is City Manager Sonia Alves Viveros and CFO Michael Kaufman. Um, we have three items on the docket tonight that we'll be covering. And we'll be covering Municipal Court, the Health Department, and Department of Public Works. Um, and then at, at which time, um, Sonia, would you like to have questions after each one? Or would we wait and hold it until we have it at the end? So what I would like to do is structure this. Uh, in, so I'd like to structure this manner. So um, first, let's, I think we should allow the department head to introduce themselves and just uh, in general terms, go over their narratives. Okay. Um, followed by that, um, talk a little bit about their table of organization, what it looks like. And then we can go into the... Uh, appropriations and and I th and and I think that, that that should be really the order we should discuss everything okay that's fair but I'm asking for the question part of it case public comment we can wait sure. to the end I think we should wait to the end correct so we're gonna go we're gonna wait till the, everybody's finished and then we'll have public comment on these three departments at the end after following the DPW presentation so now we'll start with the court Good evening, Council President Cobb. How are you tonight? Okay. I'm fine. Good. Um, How are you? Uh, may I just hold on? May I just interject? I, I this is my first time meeting um, the judges here, so if Please you wouldn't mind introducing yourself. yourselves. Hello, my name is Frank Letty. I'm your municipal court judge, and also here is our other judge. Hi. Good evening. This is uh, Helene Herbert. 
It's very nice to meet you. I wish we were in person. Likewise. It's good to, it's good to see everybody. Thank you. I'll just say, I'll just say what the, give a brief summary, like a 10 second, just of the, what their budget is. Um, their uh, salaries went up $22,000 and their uh, other appropriations went up $6,500. So it's not that much, uh, $28,000 altogether. And much of that is due to uh, any contractual obligations that we have uh, in addition to personnel requests that we cannot discuss in open obvious, for obvious reasons. Okay. Could you just know the percent increase that that represents? Uh, total 5.69%. Thank you. Somebody, we got some feedback from somebody. They can put their uh, put their uh, Zoom on mute, please. Okay, who's going to start? Frank, or do you want me? Whatever. I can start. Um, okay. <laughs> we submitted you a memorandum dated January six, which basically shows you the comp the comp comparison between uh, fiscal year. 2019 and 2020. Um, as you can see from the figures on the first page, the court is it's just a function of the number of tickets and the productivity uh, of the police department. Uh, COVID has you know, dramatically affected the city uh, and probably each and every uh, department in it. Um, if you look at the numbers between pre-COVID 2019 and COVID year 2020, we're exactly 50, well, roughly, almost exactly 50% less than uh, 2019. We um, took in $1.26 million in 2019. We took in $539,000 in 2020. We gave $584,000 to the city in 2019 and a little less than 300,000 in 2020. There were 10,727 uh, traffic tickets in 2020, 2019, more than double, almost 23,000 tickets. The criminal, same thing. There was 565 in 2020 and over 1,700, almost three times as much uh, criminal complaints written in 2019. We had 60 DWIs in 2020 and double that 119 in uh, 2019. So if we look at the numbers of the work that was presented to us through law enforcement uh, in 2019 and 2020, the revenues are commensurate with the, the work that we've done. Uh, Ms. Barr uh, actually exerted some pressure uh, on our private collection agency and our receivables in that particular area went up about $4,000 or 13%. Um, the Englewood Court is a great place to work. I love working there. Uh, the staffs bear the brunt on a daily basis of oftentimes angry and disgruntled uh, defendants whose anger has to be directed somewhere even though we didn't issue the ticket, we didn't see what went on, we don't know what happened, but the staff, I watch every day, they're calm, they're professional, uh, they respond and they explain why things are happening and what to expect. I see this day in and day out. They're really great, um, great staff. Um, and I understand the budgetary process and the constraints that are put on you as the governing body to be fiscally responsible to the citizens. I kind of feel that also has to be balanced with some affirmation of your employees' hard efforts. Uh, we were generally uh, one of the only departments that was staffed open and in the court physically throughout this pandemic since, since March going forward. Uh, we had to struggle and acclimate ourselves to that remote and virtual court 
and the challenges of saying we overcame that. We're doing fabulously. Uh, our court is fully staffed. They're working hard. We are moving all the cases. We're picking up uh, the backlog from the uh, time where we basically completely stopped. Um, we also have problems in enforcement, which I don't know if uh, uh, the governing body is aware of. Uh, normally, if people don't show up for court, we can send them a failure to appear notice. If they don't show up a second time, uh, we can close it out to the Motor Vehicle Commission. That usually gets their attention because they suspend their driver's license for not appearing in court. And then they have to pay a restoration fee and they want to get their license back. If that doesn't work, I can issue a, a bench warrant. We have been precluded due to COVID from doing any of this. So if, and people out there know it, you're issued a ticket and if you don't show up, the judge and the court can't do anything about enforcing it. Uh, so that has hamstrung us uh, quite a bit. It's frustrating um, because- plus, plus, plus Frank, we've also had bail reform. So mixed in with all of that as well. Yes, you're right. Um, and I know that we requested some uh, salary increases. Uh, I've known Betty, Debbie Ann Barr for nigh on to 15 years or so. Um, you have probably one of, if not the finest uh, certified municipal court administrators in this bar that I have ever seen. I've served in a number of courts. I see what's going on. I see the yeoman's task that she's doing there. Um, and I did a little comparison this afternoon. Um, Englewood, Fort Lee, Paramus, Hackensack, they are your, probably your largest four courts in Bergen County. Uh, I looked at Fort Lee and the municipal court administrator there has been there less time than Debbie Ann their workload is probably very substantially similar to ours in the term of tickets written and adjudicated complaints, et cetera. And their court administrator back in 2019, I couldn't get 2020 and 2021, was making over $120,000 a year. Um, and she has more staff more hands to do the work that Debbie Ann is doing personally. So I really want to recommend her for a substantial, substantial raise. She's been there since I believe 1999 and has never received a merit increase. Uh, she receives the cost of living and longevity and that's it. Um, if you ever lost Debbie Ann, I'm being very candid, I don't know what, hap what would happen to your court. Uh, you would never get a replacement for the salary that she's making. I really, you know, you know, would I love a, a raise? Would Judge Herbert, would everybody else love a raise? Yeah, but you know what? The, the glue that holds your court together is Debbie Ann Barr. Um, she really deserves um, some acknowledgement of the efforts that she's put in. If any, if any of you have gone into the council table, uh, council chambers and the court and see the uh, COVID uh, things that she's put in, we've got air scrubbers, we've got ventilators, we've got PPP all over the place, we've got plexiglass shields. I mean, it is other courts I have sent to come to see this court. I said, come look at our court and this is how it's done. And that's how it's done right. She really did a great job um, in protecting this. So we've had uh, a few in-court uh, trials, which we had to do on an individualized basis. Um, so, you know, just, I know you've got budgetary constraints. Uh, our revenue is down, but with the COVID vaccine, I think the police are going to be uh, more not aggressive, but more cognizant of what's going on. Uh, everyone knows that, you know, with COVID people are staying off the streets and, and you know, the police officers hopefully will get back in the swing of things because we're a function of what they do. If they write tickets, 10 tickets, we adjudicate 10. If they write 100, we adjudicate 100. 
Um, so although our revenue is down, your staff is there. We are working on the backlog. Uh, we're in really good shape. Uh, we have very busy court uh, hearings. Um, Judge, what, what's the backlog now, currently? How far are we back? Deputy Ann, you know what our backlog is? I don't have it off the top of my head. I know we've been drastically reducing it. Is Debbie in there? Yes. I can get that information. Yeah. You're, you're, Debbie, cases you're added during the month and cases um, disposed of. So the backlog right now is because people are, some of them are not coming to court because they know they're not getting warrants anymore because of COVID. And they know that, you know, they can, you know, we don't have to send out FTAs anymore and stuff like that. So, but we are working on the backlog as they call and we have to call everyone one by one to get their email addresses, to get mm -hmm. their phone number for Zoom. We have to do that on a daily basis and it's very hard trying to reach out to them but with our notices has changed to say that they must call the court because it is now virtual and we will give them a Zoom ID. So we have been working on the backlog. So, you know, that's what we're really working on and people are coming in when they can, you know. And um, like the judge says, you know, they come into court, then they have to call us after they adjudicate their case and we take it by credit card. Or we have the drop box in the front of the court where they drop their payments off. So that's what we have been doing. Thank God we have the credit card machine. Yeah, we don't get a lot in the mail, but they do call right away to pay. So the old cases, we are moving them along. So I, I, just, I, 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 yeah, I just think that we need to know the number. I think that would be helpful for us as well. Oh, I don't have we can get that for you. Okay, okay, if you we'll can get, get the number for us. And, and the, I have a monthly report. By Monday, I'll have the new monthly report for you. The AOC report will be ready on the 8th. I'll okay. have that for you for Monday because we are always a month behind with our report. All right. So even Monday if it's, day, I have even if it's, it a, yeah, even if it's a month behind, that's fine. Yeah, we always Just, send it up to uh, yeah. Viviere. So Monday, she'll get the new uh, okay. report on Monday with the backlog yep. report and the um, amount of money that comes in. Okay. I can forward yep. that to the city council, to the mayor and city council, Debbie, and once you oh, forward okay. it. Oh, okay. All right. So when I send yeah. it, Monday, I'll forward it to them. Okay. No you, you know, if I, if I may also address this issue as well. Um, so when Debbie Ann says FTA, it really is the failure to appear. So, and as Judge Letty has mentioned, we, our hands are really tied. We can only do so much to enforce or to have litigants show up for court. Um, I can tell you both Judge Letty and, and myself, we are very respectful and mindful of all the litigants. I think that um, it's a great team. And quite frankly, what they, what Debbie Ann, Donna, Tabish, Tony, and Alima had to, had to do and Jackie, um, from, you know, starting in March, April, May, it was a nightmare yes. trying to figure out all of the COVID-19 orders that were coming down from the court mm -hmm. and how, how we had to move forward. It was completely uncharted territory. And quite frankly, um, Judge Letty and I were initially, we were in our offices doing the Zoom court. They were making copies, scanning, emailing. We were, um, Thousands. <laughs> you know, we were marking up the copies and then we're bringing them back. And then they had to collate them back into the file. The amount of work that these folks had to do was just unimaginable. And there was no preparation for how they had to dive in and get it done. And they got it done. That's the amazing part. And it's a busy court. And what uh, Judge Letty and I have been doing is instead of, you know, to help them out, we go now to the courtroom because we feel safe, because Debbie Ann and Jackie and everybody has done such an amazing job 
um, in the courtroom, we're comfortable going to court. We sit in court, we do our Zoom sessions. Literally, we walk in and between Debbie Ann and Jackie, we literally just have to sit down, everything is done and we conduct court. And, and then, and then we, we end court, but everything now with Judge Letty and myself, we are appearing in person. Uh, the public defender appears virtually. The prosecutor appears virtually. But quite frankly, we can only do that because the team that we have in Englewood is truly amazing. They have really, really risen to the, to the challenge. And I don't know any other court that has done as good of a job that, that they have. And you walk into that courtroom and it is pristine. It is, you know, anybody, any trials we've had, everybody's you know. always commented. I know Englewood Cliffs has come down and they were, they, they were in awe of how, how, how safe they felt, the amount of plexiglass, the, um, the amount of PPP that we had, PPE that we had. Um, it really, we, we really are the standard now. And we, we, have, we have that amazing team to thank. So thank you, I'm thanking you. Okay, Any, anybody else from the uh, municipal court team who would like to speak or who's scheduled to speak before I open it up to the uh, Jackie, council members? are you there? Jackie? If she's not a panelist, Yancey oh, has to let her in. There. Okay, yes, and also the directives that were coming in every day uh, Judge Herbert, the directives, we get at least 10 to 15 directives almost every day. And then in a week, they change it on us. So they have us put in stickers on the notices. We will send out 700 notices by hand by printing the stuff. And then the following week, they change the, the directives on us. And then we have to do it another way. And how we do Zoom and Every day it was a challenge and it keep going on and on. Judge Grant would send up something and my head would spin. That and, we and, have to adapt to it. And if I just may say one more thing, we were also very, there was a, a considerable disadvantage that we had to, that we have to deal with is that we have attorneys that are asking for in-person <laughs> trials. So, so we have, there is a lot of energy spent trying to negotiate with the police, prosecutor, public defender, regular attorneys for in-person trials. And, uh, and sadly, sometimes they get canceled. Um, so, and many of these, and, and that's part of, and if there is a backlog, that's part of the backlog is that many of the DWI and the more serious charges, the attorneys are coming in and saying, hey, you know, because the, because the seriousness and the consequences that my client is facing, I want to have an in-person trial. And we have to then apply to yes. the municipal division and ask for permission to have an in-person trial. And that takes time. And oh, that yeah. takes, and that takes more work from Debbie Ann and Jackie. So, I mean, there is a considerable amount of work that's, that has had to have been done for this past year. And they really have done an amazing job. It's true about the uh, DWIs, the uh, defense counsel, the defense bar are quite savvy and they know that they're entitled to have their Sixth Amendment right of confrontation. They want it in person. So they have been delaying and delaying and delaying. And Judge Mizdal has not granted um, a lot of our requests for in-person trials. So we're kind of, sort of stuck. If we do a Zoom trial, we know we're going to be appealed and they're going to reverse us and send it back to us because they couldn't, the trier of fact, the judges couldn't uh, see the body language, the, you know, and we don't know who's behind, like Judge Herbert could have someone sitting behind her feeding her answers and we don't know that. Um, so we're trying to protect everybody's rights and also get the job done. And, and, and Debbie Ann did touch on one thing, this COVID and the virtual trials and all of the requirements has probably doubled the work she has for each and every court session. I mean, she has to get 
in touch with each and every one of them. We have hangups. We have uh, we have older defendants who don't have uh, internet capability. They don't have iPhones. Uh, we work around it. Uh, we really, really do. Uh, I don't. They do. <laughs> right. And it actually it extends our court sessions. So mm -hmm. so between Frank and Frank and I, we've we've been we've been municipal court judges a long time, and Frank's Frank's been a little bit longer than me. But between the two of us, we can really move a calendar. And despite that ability to really move a calendar, we you know we have to deal with you know all the virtual. And you see it for yourself doing the virtual meetings. So sometimes what happens and we have to always ensure that the record is clear so sometimes we have to repeat things multiple times um and and it just it it, it can take a regular session and then extend it ex, you know really astronomically so um so again and debbie Anna, jackie and everybody the team has had to deal with that um, I, I think I would Jackie wanted to say something. I, I can't I, see her, but I don't know where she is. Jackie, well, is we, we have we, we have we have exactly fifteen more minutes for oh, the okay. session, and we have somebody else, so we have a limited time. Every meeting is, I believe, forty-five minutes. Um, so, what I want to make sure is that the council members have an opportunity oh, okay. to ask questions uh, of the uh, folks uh, presenting tonight from the court. Um, so, any council members have any questions? Council President. Council, council. Uh, yes, I have a question, Council President. Yep. I, I just want to uh, get clarity. I, I, I can appreciate the, the difficulties that COVID has presented and uh, understand all the, the work that's being done. Uh, Judge Letty made a, a comment, and I probably didn't get it clearly, but I thought he said that uh, he'd made uh, or that the court had made tremendous inroads into uh, getting rid of the backlog. And, and then from what was being said afterward, I got the impression that there's, that might not, that might not be fully the case. So I, I just want somebody to explain, you know, what it is that is being said relative to the backlog. And if we're going to get a report on, on Monday, uh, that uh, would be uh, supplied, you know, normally to uh, the city manager. Uh, I do want to get some indication, you know, year over year, where we stand, you know, uh, the metrics of, you know, how we're doing relative to uh, getting rid of cases versus, you know, where the numbers looked last year. If you know, was... if I may, um, Councilman uh, Hammer, if I may first address it, is that what I was trying to explain is not necessarily the backlog, but the amount of work that has increased because of COVID and the amount of time that it now requires to get a court session going, to arrange a court session, and then, and then also the, the court session itself. So it's not necessarily the backlog, but really the amount of work to get it done has just you know, tripled at times. So I, if I, you know, I hope that explains it. Did, did, does well, it explains part of it. I, I, okay. that, re that reiterates, you know, what was being said about, you know, the amount of work that's being required now with all the uh, restrictions that, that COVID's put in place. But I, I was speaking to what I thought I heard Judge Letty say about the uh, making tremendous inroads into getting rid of the backlog. So if that is not what was said. You know, I, I would appreciate uh, Judge Letty if, if you'd explain what it is that, that you said. We are adding backlog cases onto each and every court session. Ms. Barr makes sure that we get them relisted and relisted and get done. Uh, I give the attorneys quite a bit of hard time about adjournments. I don't like to adjourn cases. Uh, I move the oldest cases that we possibly can. I don't keep track of them. Uh, Ms. Barr gets those reports and we have been moving DWIs, we've been moving criminal complaints. Um, a lot of the criminal complaints that used to be kept by the Bergen County prosecutor has now been downgraded, falls on our, our shoulders and we handle them. 
um, we are moving a backlog, the backlog cases, each and every session. Do I have the numbers at my fingers tonight? No, I will on Monday. Understood. Uh, I'll, I'll just wait for the metrics because I, I, you know, I don't think we'll but, be able to get to an answer uh, tonight based on Right, but I if, think if, if you're talking about a comparison between 2019 and 2020, uh, the numbers are going to be skewed because we didn't have COVID then. I'm, I'm fine with that. I'm, I'm just speaking to what I thought I heard you say, and I, I you know, and I we just heard the different things afterwards. That's all. Yeah, I'm fine. Thank, Thank you, Councilman you. Uh, Councilman Rosen, Swag. If not by Monday, you'll have that answer. All right. Uh, thank you for the presentation. Uh, it's good to see some old friends. Uh, in the narrative, uh, you talked about the raises, but looking at the spreadsheet with the budgeted salaries, I, I didn't see raises uh, put in for the municipal court. So um, is that something that's yet to be determined or? Well, well the, when the when the departments come to first they meet with uh, me and the city manager and then we decide what goes into the budget that we present to the council so there was one raise in the so typically what happens uh councilman is that there's a recommendation made by the city manager to the city council so what you see in there is our is my recommendation okay all right thank you Anybody it's else from me? Excuse me? I said it's just good to see everybody. I just oh, okay. <laughs> Does anybody else on the council have uh, any questions? No. Okay. I would any would Jill, the folks from the municipal court, would you like to say anything in closing? Well, thank you very much, Council President yeah. and members of the council for hearing us. Um, we love the court. We love Anglewood. Uh, we're doing a good job for you. Um, I always say, if you don't hear anything about the court, that means we're doing the right thing. Because you only hear from us or about us if we do something wrong. So hopefully it's been like crickets over at the uh, <laughs> city hall. <laughs> and I thank you for listening to us. Okay, thank thank you for your presentation. I think and that, if you uh, ever wanna and if you ever wanna come back, have your meeting. You have plex <laughs> right between every one of you. You could talk to each other. You, you are plexi in between. <laughs> and I, and if I also may say, I um, I am humbled. I am honored to serve and to serve our 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 community. And I am I am very grateful. I'm also very grateful to Debbie Ann and to the fabulous team, Jackie, to be like, they, they truly are fabulous. I know that you've heard us talk about it, but it really has been a terrible year and they've done an, an amazing job. So um, they took what could have been a horrific situation and they made it very doable. And uh, thank you guys. There are a number of courts out there. So much. Horrific. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Uh, thank you for the presentation. Thank you so much. And, thank you. You know, we will be huddling with the city manager going forward. Thank all you. All right, great. Right. Thank it's you. Good to see everybody. Thank right. you all so right. much. Good night. Nice all meeting right. you all. Yes. Good night. Do we have Do we have the next folks ready? Health department, I believe. I believe we do. We have Jim Federko on. We need to move him over, Yancey. So we got to we got to go out of this Zoom and find the the, the next. No, one? no, no. We stay. No. Okay, we stay. We stay. Okay. Uh, just as an aside, today we met with the um, uh, COVID team, and there was a, if the people haven't seen it yet, there was a narrative put out with regard to vaccination, and the city has now held uh, 100 doses. They were delivered on Monday. We are going to start them tomorrow, uh, appointments only. So we just wanted to let the community know that we are rolling these out. Uh, the vaccine was received this morning. Oh, this morning, I apologize. Yeah, uh, we did receive the, the needles on Monday. They sent the needles on Monday. 
in the blizzard. <laughs> it's better than nothing, right? Uh, I, I would also request that if uh, you see, Sonia, if you see Denise Dominguez, she's now the office manager. Deborah Baldwin will be retiring on March 31st of this year. And Denise Dominguez is the new office manager for the city of Inglewood. Well, for the Inglewood Health Department. Right. She took her place. Okay. Do you see her, Sonia, or is, I guess what I asked Yancy. Uh, I don't Denise see Dominguez. who she is an attendee. <clears throat> okay, Jim. Also, also present. Uh, uh, you don't have to in, invite them in, or if you want. But we have our uh, budget committee for the Board of Health. That's uh, Dr. Eliza Solomon and Josh Tenzer. They're also listening in as well. So they've been invited, and they know that the start time is at 7:45. Those are board members, and they are on the budget committee. Eliza Solomon is also the president of the Board of Health. So just to clarify, Jim, when Denise comes on, I'm letting her in. She's part of your presentation. I could probably do it on my own, but you know, Denise is also an uh, integral team member. So if you can invite her in as well. Okay. <clears throat> just uh, briefly, the health department this year is requesting for salary wages, it's $23,000 more, which is an increase of 3.54%. Other expenses Wait, say, went down. Hold on, say that again. $23,000, which is 3.54%. And for other expenses, it went down $4,100, which is a decrease of 4.85% for a total increase of 2.5%, 18,900. Uh, Michael, I don't, I don't, I don't, I'm, in the beginning, I think that's a, you know, I think that's incorrect because with uh, Deborah Baldwin's retirement, we've, our salary and line wage uh, has decreased because of Deborah Baldwin's retirement. And uh, we've asked for some salary increases, but I think overall our budget will, will decrease from, from 2020 to 2021. So, so Jim, the issue with that is that we're still in 2021 and she is yet to retire. So uh, we keep the table of organization okay. as a whole. Last year, me. and last year she was supposed to retire also and she didn't. And we, <laughs> well, we let's not up. talk about anybody specifically. Yep. Okay. 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 So but right now, in terms of the table of organization, it hmm. remains the same. And that's what the salary and wages reflect. Uh, Denise Dominguez, you're, you're flipped upside down. <clears throat> Thank you, Denise. Good. Hey, Jim. <clears throat> so I, I believe you guys have my budget narrative there, uh, which mm -hmm. uh, I know we, I, we're not um allowed to talk about anybody particularly, but we're going to have a retirement. And uh, with that retirement, we're not going to have a new hire. The people in the vital statistics section will be picking up the, the loss of an employee. And uh, we also have Elisa Smith, uh, another person who will be helping out in the vital statistics section to take some of those um, uh, responsibilities with the birth and death certificates. One of the, the driving factors behind our health department is the Inglewood Hospital, which uh, we have a lot of births. We, we do a lot of births, uh, around 3,000 birth certificates that we issue throughout the year. And uh, we also do the death certificates here in the city. We also do the licensing for all the, all the restaurants and uh, liquor stores that we have here in, in Inglewood and the vaping shops that occur here in Inglewood. So that's a driving factor behind the health department. I like to say uh, for our new council members that are here, the, the budget for the health department, I, I round it off like this. The, the cost is around $750,000 and the income generated from licenses and, and the fees is about $250,000. So 
the health department costs the city of Inglewood approximately $500,000, a half a million dollars to run our department. And, and that's a, just a, a general good way of looking at our department. <clears throat> that's, that's like a good overall picture. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, with this year with uh, COVID-19, the, the salary, the income from our, our licenses and our fees has decreased. Um, it's decreased about $80,000. However, on the bright side of things, the health department, we did really well with getting grants from the state to help offset our expenses. So we've received over $160,000 more this year for grants to help pay for our salaries and line wages. And, and that's gonna continue into 2021 as well. We received a grant of $142,000, which will help with some of the overtime and expenses that were occurring due to COVID-19 at, at this point. So uh, the health department is, uh, has decreased with our uh, operational revenues, but has increased substantially for our grants that we've, that we've won. If any um, questions or comments from the, from the uh, council members, especially the new members? Yes. Ben, go ahead. So this will, you're going to be the only department I asked this to. How come you're not asking for more money? Uh, you know, with, with the terribly acute needs because of COVID, uh, how come we're not, you know, being more aggressive to, to get more resources out there, uh, you know, more ability to, to vaccinate if, if that's, you know, worthwhile to, I know, I know the personnel right now, as you described at the council meeting three weeks ago, the personnel and the uh, location limits you, but should we be thinking big here? Uh, you know, the vaccinations are going to probably be going through the end of the summer. And, uh, and I don't even know what the economics of vaccinations are if, if we get reimbursement for that down the road. So it could even be a revenue generator. Um, I feel like 2021 is the one year that, you know, whatever, whatever you say, you know, uh, it, it, you know the bigger, it's the year that bigger is better. That, that, that's what I'm, that's what oh. I'm thinking. So, and, and, and uh, not business as usual, which, I, you know, th this budget doesn't look much different than, you know, what the 2018 budget would have been. You know, the numbers are a little bit different. The personnel is a little bit different. You wouldn't, you wouldn't know we're in the middle of uh, the worst pandemic in 103 years. So for our contact tracing piece, uh, you're right. We had to shift our, our staff over to do contact tracing in the beginning, but now the state of New Jersey has given me contact tracers who, who will who, who do that job. So I don't have an expense there. I, I do still have an expense. We have one person who I've hired, a, a nurse, and she's, she's good. And I like her on our team. And I give her the hard assignments. Uh, Michael Cochran knows her. So that is part of a, a, a budget that we do. But we've we're able, again, with the grants that we won, we're able to pay her salary. So we're good with the contact tracing piece. So that's the piece. Now, with the vaccine portion of it, um, <clears throat> you're right. We could say that we're going to go big. And I, I, but I think we, we have the hospital in our city who's going to be doing the big piece. They're going to be the heavy lifters. They're going to be the ones who are doing the mass vaccination. So I don't see a need for the Inglewood Hospital to, to, to uh, compete with them. Our, our niche, which is which what we have, are we could find the people who are the underserved. These are the people who we have the relationship with the churches, and in the community that we could call up. So we are the folks who are gonna go and do the little sites. We're gonna to go to the smaller churches. We, 
we we talked about maybe going into the bigger community Baptist church and and also we're going to go to 111 West so we are the persons who are doing the smaller localized vaccine uh, demands and then secondly our second part is okay so the hospital is going to do the mass the the big one and we are going to do the little ones and I don't see a need to hire more staff to do that project. And um, so I, I understand, yeah, I, I suppose we're going to buy a refrigerator and a freezer and they're going to be bigger. But again, I have the grant money to, to pay for that. I don't need to ask you guys for the money for the, the bigger fridge and freezer for our department and the nicer one that's going to be paid for. So I can't, I can't justify I can't justify it unless you, you know, and I'm not going to spend the money frivolously. Just even it. Also, one other thing, we, we also have a $260,000 in the budget for the pandemic as a whole. So if there's things that we have to spend for the pandemic, we, we have money in a separate budget line for that. Um, Michael, could you also, just so the council members are aware, the total amount we've been reimbursed for COVID with the CARES Act money, that, that should be an important figure for them to, to know um, and see in terms of like the offset of the budget, what, what is there now being allocated for COVID related expenses and, and things that we've been, we've been reimbursed in 20, 2020 through the CARES Act since that's now ended. Okay, yeah, the CARES Act ended, so any money we spend now is are probably not going to be reimbursed unless the state comes out of the federal government. Well, know, FEMA. FEMA. Right, there's, right. Yeah. so FEMA uh, will reimburse the 75%, so we've, I'm aware of that. Anything, anything additional, um, the OEM coordinator and will put that through, through FEMA, correct? Well, now FEMA doesn't cover anything anymore unless it's for police and fire, and if it's only right. for, for specific purposes, so, so basically, calls and things like that, right? Yeah, but we should we should try to itemize those things that if there was a, a COVID call or something like that, or things we done separately. For example, um, if we decide to do the vaccination over at the fire uh, department, uh, we do any sort of drive through, any added expenses, we should really itemize that because that is COVID. Yes. And we could try to get FEMA reimbursed, which is yes, for the police and fire. Right. So, uh, so what's a ballpark of what we've been reimbursed from the CARES Act? Around half a million dollars. Okay. And, and so, you know, when we did our drive through uh, clinic, we won a grant for that. So, we, again, we didn't have to spend any money. And then when we did our second one with the Inglewood Hospital, they gave us money. So, we didn't have an, we don't have a need. Okay, so getting but back to thinking big, okay, so what's the plans for, I mean, are you in contact with Englewood Health? I am. Um, and, and you know, when do we think things are going to get rolling in the city? Because I don't want to say other towns, but there's a town that rhymes with NeTech <laughs> um, and Noli Haim Hospital, which has been a very aggressive uh, and um, you know, and, and, and I think we're, we're coming up short compared to them. So you know, we want to get on the scoreboard with this. I know, and I, I explained that to them, that they're getting a lot of good press. And uh, they pointed out to the fact that, you know, they got some good press in the beginning, but a lot of that stuff they had to walk back with Holy Name and, and the Rota Center. And then uh, the other, um, the issue, they, they had a nice write-up in the Wall Street Journal for vaccinating over, uh, not over 1,100 police, fire, and EMTs uh, a few weeks ago. So the Inglewood Hospital is working there, and they just, it, maybe they're not just getting the limelight um, that we'd like to see. Uh, they wrote to me today, and they said, good job of getting the, the vaccines in, and uh, they, they still were holding their uh, cards close to your chest, you know, they, about, uh, and I don't want to speak for them, but they're going to come through. It'll come. 
Councilwoman. No. Um, I have a, a question, I, something I really don't know. I mean, uh, Joe Biden's proposal, which seems he seems to be serious about pushing it through, uh, has a significant amount of money for the, uh, the vaccine and the, implement, and the implementation. Um, I think that's what Ken was talking about. If this money is coming through, uh, I don't know the vehicles. I don't know if it's going to come through... Uh, a new CARES Act or a, you know, FEMA, but we will be closing ourselves off if, if we don't expand our program. That's a question. But just a comment before you answer, just for you to know, Jim, there are a lot of Englewood citizens, at least in my ward, the people that I'm in touch with, that are very disappointed in the hospital's response to their request you know, to get on a list. Every time you go onto their website, the list is closed. So uh, when you when you announced that uh, people could call Englewood Health and get on a list, they were very excited about that. They loved the idea, you know, that first of all they would be talked to by someone. And from what I the feedback I've gotten is that your people did a terrific job, at least in getting them on a list, so they felt there was some help. So I want you to know you're being appreciated. And I guarantee you that if you expanded your vision, the people will come. The people will come. Anyway, thank hey, you. Jim, thank I, you. Think, I think you need to, um, what would be helpful is explain how you get the doses and how you could get more doses based on the process. I think if you told us, and I, and I don't want this to be just about COVID because this is a budget hearing, um, but you can explain that part of the information um, I already know, but just tell them, you know, you got a hundred doses and tell them what happens for you to get more doses, what has to happen, that whole process. So uh, <clears throat> how we get the doses is, is a, a bit of a mystery. We submit our, our proposal and we, we put our hand out and we could hold 300 doses. Um, we do that on Sunday night. Now, this this past week we were lucky. They gave us a hundred doses. I don't have any control of that. I don't know who has control over that. It is it's a mystery. So, however, <clears throat> we're not allowed to put another hundred another order in until we expend all those doses. So we have to have we have to give a hundred doses and we have to enter it into the registration system, which is called NJIIS. So all that has to be in before Sunday, and it's got to be 100%. And then we're qualified to ask for another batch of doses. So we have 100 in. We're supposed to get those on Monday, but we didn't get them until today. So we're running a little behind. So our plan is to finish those doses before Sunday so that we could request more. And, and that's the process, how it works. Uh, outside of that, I have no other control on how I could get more doses or, or and uh, no, I just put my hand out. We, we submit our order, we follow the chain of command and, and this is how it works. Um, <clears throat> one of the things that we're going to do though, uh, we're going to request that we transport it offsite so I think Sonia had mentioned that, you know, you guys, most of you have been in our health department. You see our, how, how small it is and we're not, can't do a vaccine out, we can't do it outside. So uh, we're either going to move it to the court or we're going to ask the, the president of the uh, Inglewood Volunteer Corps said that we could use their facility over there. If that's the case, then we could do more doses more quickly and we could bring in our volunteers. We have some volunteers who have uh, signed up and will help us with administration and in, in giving the doses as well. So those are some things we're working on. And, and uh, so there are some costs involved with that, but again, we have uh, 100 and approximately $120,000 that we'll, we'll use to pay any salaries that we need. The Inglewood Ambulance Corps is coming here on Friday, they're donating an EMT to help. So I have no cost for an EMT, which is good. 
you know, and, and that's a good news story there. Anybody else have any questions for Jim? Uh, Council President, I don't, I don't yes. have a, a question necessarily. Well, I do have a, a question later on, but I do want to make a quick comment. Uh, and I, I, I want to say this, and, and I've said it in the past, and it's, it holds true. Uh, given the diversity of, of our demographic, um, uh, of, the, of our population, rather, um, we are lucky to have a health department like the one we have, and we're lucky to have leadership like we have in uh, Mr. Fedorko. Uh, you know, there was talk some time ago of, you know, merging our health department with another or, you know, blending it into the hospital. But uh, I think that you serve a, uh, a, a, you serve in a unique role. Uh, we have a, a very, you know, different population than most of Bergen County, and you absolutely fill the bill. So, um, you know, we are, we are blessed to have you. Uh, you absolutely make a difference here. And uh, to uh, Councilman Rosenzweig's uh, earlier comment, uh, I, I've asked in the past if you, know, you see, you're on the ground, you, know, you see what's coming mm -hmm. you know, our way in terms of the um, issues that confront the population that we have here. So if there are things that we need to do uh, in a broader and deeper way, then, um, you know, you just need to communicate that to us so that we can help meet those needs. And, you know, that's, that's really all that I have to say about, uh, you know, comment wise, yeah. uh, question wise, uh, you did speak in, and I, I don't want to make this all COVID related, but you did say that we can't get more until you expend what you have. Are you, uh, do you have capacity to request uh, more doses than you, you've been asking you, you asked for a hundred the first time, and I guess a hundred the second time. Uh, do you have uh, capacity for a, a larger number of doses, or do you need to move out of the, the space that you're in to, uh, you know, accommodate more residents? Our our freezer has the capacity for 300 doses. Okay. We're ordering a bigger freezer. Um, and. And, and 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 does that mean that your your request then will be for three hundred? Or are you able to our, our, handle request, that flow? Our request is for three hundred doses, but they only okay. gave us a hundred. Understood. And, okay. All right. Good. Thank and, you. And thank you. I, I want to also say thank you because when it, when this first started, um, know that the council was always saying, Jim, if you need anything, you let me know. If we need to, and and so thank you, uh, Councilman uh, Cobb and uh, Councilman Hamer. You know you guys were saying, Jim, you gotta let me know if you need anything. And Council President, thank you for that. Jim, it's just important that we take care uh, of the city, as Councilman Hamer said, because we have a lot of people who are underserved here who can't afford these uh, these costs, but. We, if we have the resources available, let's make them available to everybody and let's make sure we take care of the underserved and all these people. As I said to you earlier, there's a lot of people out here that uh, need this help. So, and I guess getting back to what Councilman Hamer said, let's ask for whatever we could ask for and let's see how we can manage it from there, right? I'm, I'm not, I, I understand what uh, Inglewood Hospital is gonna do, but there's definitely a play for you, for people who are underserved, because you have relationships with some of these people as well. And I'm sure we could get rid of those doses when we got, you know, the, the census says about 28, but we know it's probably about 30,000 people in town. And uh, just keep up the good work and keep pushing. Thank you. And also I gotta thank Mayor Wilds too for your help early on doing those videos and all the other uh, little things you helped out with it. Uh, throughout this uh, pandemic. So thanks, Mayor Wilds, too. Thank, Thank you, uh, Jim. Charles, if I may, I'm sorry that I came late. I was actually teaching till now. Um, I have such confidence, not just in your leadership, but in the notion that he has individually saved lives. You have about 80 uh, people at any given time that you're contact tracing right now. And the, just the high esteem that you're held in the county, in the hospital, 
and then all the different vendors that have crossed through. And I just want everybody to understand the commitment. You will find Jim in the health department on weekends, on evenings. He has no discernible uh, clock or watch, and he is so vested in the safety and the health of our community. Not every community has a health department, and it does serve the diverse interests that we have. But right now in a pandemic, everybody is vulnerable. And the fact that you deployed the testing and now the vaccines in a way that is going to reach everybody and that you can't wait to get your hands on vaccines is just really emblematic of how uh, capable and how important you and your entire department. And I just want to just touch on another thing. I have been doing weddings since March and I have not stopped in my driveway, in the backyard, your office, it takes about 45 minutes to do a Zoom session to do the, for one license. And they were backed up, but they still wanted to continue the machinations and the mechanics and the technical uh, work that you do, even outside of the COVID related area. I find that to be in such a high station because things like weddings, and sadly death certificates for people to probate estates, those are things that are so important to, for the business of the city uh, to continue. I, I missed the court session, but I can venture to say that on, on the financials and on the numbers and the efficacy of the system, we're not just getting our taxpayer dollars, but you're really one of Englewood's COVID heroes. So thank you as well and to your whole department. Um, I, I just wanted for the record, uh, just to state that uh, Councilman Cohen had to sign off for a little bit. I was also trying to say the mayor was on. Uh, just he wished uh, to convey that he had to uh, attend a prayer vigil for a relative uh, that is um, in the hospital and uh, on a ventilator uh, and the family has been called in. So he, he wanted me to say that. So I'm repeating what he requested. He will uh, rejoin if once he is uh, able to. Okay. Councilman Rosenzweig. Thank, thank you. And, for, and our thoughts and prayers go out to Councilman Cohen's relative. Uh, uh, just to echo uh, what uh, Councilman Hamer said, um, you know, and, and if you allow me to editorialize, I, I think a few fictions that have been dispelled by this pandemic have, has been that uh, CVS and Walgreens walk-in clinics can take the place of hospitals. And I, I say that as someone who works in a, in a big hospital and that communities don't need health departments uh, because uh, I thank God every day for the Englewood Health Department and, and the great work you're doing. And you know, you hear uh, uh, the stories from around the country of dispirited health, uh, health officials. And I'm, you know, I'm so glad I'm walking onto a council that has been supporting the health department for all these years and that you're able to present you know, such great plans and uh, service to the city. So, so thank you for that. Uh, and, and thank you for allowing me to editorialize there. Okay. All right, anybody else have any questions or comments before we just, let Mr. Federico go? Just one last comment. Uh, since the health department is finishing up its presentation, uh, a, we're losing a, uh, a, a jewel. Uh, Debbie Baldwin, Deborah Baldwin, uh, has uh, been a help in, on many different levels inside of Inglewood. And uh, she's retiring on March 31st, and it's been a pleasure to work with her. Uh, it's been a pleasure to rely on her. Uh, not that retirement's gonna uh, keep her from you know, all the things that we have for her to do, but uh, just wanna say congratulations and uh, you know the city will miss you. Thank you. Agreed, agreed, agreed. She's one of a kind. Okay. Um, any other questions for Mr. Federico? Jim, I believe you're off the hot seat. Sonia. That boy wasn't too hot for him. Yeah, uh, it's good. He he likes this though. Thank you, Thank you no, no problem. Sonia, um, you, do you have uh, Mr. Jenkins up now? We do. Um... I know we're not going to keep him along because he's taking care of. Uh, Things. Yes. <laughs> what, they, they've had stuff to do recently? Huh? <laughs> Not a whole lot, you know. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I just want to say I, I sent the council, I emailed the council around uh, an hour and a half ago, just a summary of DPW because they have so many different budget accounts, departments. Uh, just a summary of, of 
the total of their expenditures and salary and wages and overtime. What is going yeah, it's up? very helpful. Thank you. What is going up compared to last year? So if you want me to go through that quickly before. Yeah, you, you should, but wait till Mr. Jenkins gets here. Yeah, right, yeah. I just sent him a message. He typically calls in on these meetings. Yeah, so you sent him over the information, correct? Sorry, yes, it was sent over. Unless we just finished a little earlier than we anticipated. I think Actually, so. he's down for 8.30, so we're 20 minutes early. Yeah, well, if you could call him. Let me we, call him. Let's get Jim back and yell at him. <laughs> uh, Council President, perhaps yes. one, one thing we could do is uh, hear from the city manager and the CFO uh, relative to a, a, a general bu budget overview. And uh, while we're waiting, because normally we, we do that as an introduction to this right. budget sessions, and perhaps we could hear from them um, on their thoughts relative to what we're about to go through. Oh, the, the city manager is back, so she could start with Mr. Kaufman, if they would like, giving us an overview of the budget. Well, we presented the council a budget that's an increase over last year of 1.95%, which is under the 2% cap. Even, even without going through the exceptions, we're under the uh, 2%. Uh, the big part is revenue, a decrease in revenues of 10.81% from last year. The main points of those are court and the meters, uh, some health department went, uh, revenues, as Jim said, went down. Um, what the state what the state lets us do this year is because of the such a decrease in revenues last year usually we're not allowed to go over what we received we're not allowed to budget what we received more than what we received from the previous year but this year we're allowed to take a three year average from the previous three years so for the meters and for the court we did that for everything else we we used what we collected at most what we collected last year um, expenditures as a whole actually went down $132,000. So and Mr. Kaufman. Yes. What was the rate? What was, what was the budget increase last year? Last year was also around, was it 1.94%? Right. right. So we've been pretty disciplined. Yes. With our percentage. Um, and, and the one thing that the taxpayers are always interested in is the tax rate. What was our rate like? The last four years, I believe, it's gone down, right? The rate has not has not gone down. It just hasn't been. It hasn't gone up. Well, the municipal rate in 19 was 1.209. Last year was 1.233, and this year it's 1.257. What is it? Okay. I'm sorry, 1.209, 1.333? and then this year it's 1.257. What was 1.209? That was in 19. Uh, can I have a question? Um, the, the report that we heard about um, our debt service being moved so that we would be saving some money on the repayment, is that being calculated into the budget? Yes. You've already done that. Yes. Okay. Would you do it for 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 nineteen million or for twenty seven? E either way, we used we we there was <laughs> no. It's either because they're two different numbers, right? Well, we only we're we're paying on the interest. No, no, I, I get it. I get it. But if if it was nineteen, there's a number. And if there's 27 million, there's a number, right? Am I, am I correct in saying that? Yes. Okay. So we, we I thought he said he was combining it. 
That's now, what I've heard. No, no, no. So what I'm saying is you asked the question, is it is it been calculated into the budget? His answer was yes. And I asked the question whether it was 19 or 27, because no, last I night after they said this, well, we could take advantage of another any, eight, whatever. Any payment, any payment we, 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 anything we do this year won't have an effect this year. It'll have an effect next year. Interest doesn't get calculated until next year, until no, 2022. I, so yeah, I, I understand that, but I'm saying if it's in the budget, there's a number. What's the number in the budget? Is it 19 or 20? 20, 20, what number are we using? It's that, what our debt was last year. Because we wanted to take advantage of the 27, yeah. not the 19. That's what I'm saying to you. Yeah, but so, yeah, 100%. But that's going to affect next year's budget, not this no, year's budget. No, I, I, I get it. But yeah. it starts now, right? The clock's yeah. on it now. That, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. That's what. Council President, can I sure. ask a general sure. question yep. as, as Mr. Jenkins gets on? What do, what's your anticipation for tax appeals this year? And we don't even have to answer it today since Mr. Jenkins is on, but I noticed the amount we budgeted for that is the same. And I expect a lot of businesses are gonna be filing for tax appeals due, due to their businesses being um, shuttered for a good good portion of the year. We also have a reserve. We Okay, anybody, so we'll, we'll, talk, we'll, talk, yeah. we'll talk about that more, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna ask some more questions about that as we go forward. But as you know, I just wanna say that there's a reserve. so. Even though we budget 650, we have actually more than that from previous years that we didn't spend all the 650. Let's say it's 6.5 million. I mean, what, what's the uh, what's the worst case scenario? Because uh, one, one, one figure I don't know is what percentage of our taxes are from businesses. Right. I remember it being around 28% back in like 2010. I don't know if it's uh, still in that range or or higher or lower? I, I did something, some analysis for that last year, a year ago. I think it was, I, if I remember correctly, something like 50-50, I thought it was. I don't think it's ever been, it's always been the vast majority is, is residential. I'll, I'll get, I'll, I, could get, I could get that information for you. Um, Michael, for, for discussions when we go into your department, finance, uh, tax assessor, tax collector, could we try to, and, and for, to Mr. Rosenzweig's point, let's try to figure out what outstanding tax appeals are out there that might put some things into perspective. Okay. Just so any sort of anticipated cost, we can certainly talk about that and what yeah. that might yeah. look like. Yeah. And the total okay. reserves amount. Yeah. We're going to talk about taxes. So yeah, just be prepared. You know, what's the tax rate? What's all those kinds of things? We'll be asking all those questions. And what our uh, collection ratio is at the moment, anything that right. the county is looking at, things like that. So just keep that in mind. Well, I see Mr. Jenkins has joined us. Uh, Michael, you want to lead? You want to open it up for him, and then you want, and Sonia and Mr. Jenkins could present to us. Sure. Okay. And can you introduce me and a Councilwoman Marin? Mr. Jenkins. Sure. Mr. Rosenswag, Councilman Rosenswag, and Councilwoman Marin have recently joined us. So this is Mr. Edroy Jenkins. Nice to meet you guys. Same here. So the, Edward, uh, you want to get us, get us or Michael, you want to get us yep. an overall budget and then Edroy, if you want to just talk a little bit about your department, your operations, and... Uh, Anything so, else you'd uh, like to add? Yeah. So the 2020 salary and wages in comparison to 2021, it went down 124,000, which is a 3.4% decrease. Uh, overtime went up uh, 49,000, which is so, 11. Oh, oh, hold on one second. So salary and wages went, went down because we had some retirements or whatever? Yeah. Okay. And you said it went down how much? 124,000. How many, how many, how many openings do we have? What does that equate to? Openings right now, Councilman, I have um, six, um, six openings for um, laborers right now. And um, one supervisor opening. 
um, for central maintenance and also um, an another um, mechanic opening, mechanic two, I mean, mechanic three opening I also have. Mr. Jenkins, do you expect any retirements this year? Yes, sir. I'm um, expecting, matter of fact, I have, um, I think, two or, uh, two, two or three already scheduled for this year. Add one more to that, but, um, but I haven't been notified of it yet. Sorry about that, Mr. Jenkins. You could keep rolling. Um, over time, we uh, increased by $49,000, which is 11.78% increase. Uh, salary and wages as a whole went down $75,000. Mr. Kaufman, hold up one second. Over time, 49000 Yeah. That's for that's for the year twenty. You, you increased it for this year. Yes. What what was the total number of overtime? So what did we budget it for? Last year we budgeted four hundred and sixteen thousand, and this year right. four hundred and sixty-five thousand. So last year when we budgeted four hundred and sixteen, how much did we really use? We spent four hundred ninety thousand. So you spent four hundred ninety thousand, right? Yeah. So, do you think increasing the budget from four sixteen and adding forty nine thousand that would cover it? Or do you Close think to that it. should be? Yeah. Because because you know what I'm saying is, in in twenty in twenty twenty we didn't have as bad a weather. Uh, as we had, we, we and we're starting off already in 2021 with bad weather, and we, we're looking for some other things. So, um, is is 49,000 a reasonable? I'm just asking, is that a reasonable number increase? I believe? could go over with Ed Roy after you know, we'll see if you know. I, I think you may want to talk about that number. I mean, because here's my thought if he has a potential of two to three, maybe four retire scheduled retirements, right. In addition to he's down six, if I, if I, uh, my notes serve me right, you're down six laborers, one supervisor, and one mechanic. So how do we make that up? We don't make that up in $49,000, I don't think. That's just, if I look at it that way, I mean, the goal is maybe probably try to take care of this somehow, some way. But I'm just saying thoughtfulness, if we got two or three guys that are leaving, $49,000 is not going to make a, you know, is not going to cover that. If, if just also know that if two guys leave their salaries, let's say it's a uh, $70,000, that's 140 that, and they leave mid-year, that's another 70,000. We could just do a transfer at the end of the year, but, but that plays a, li a little bit into, into part. But, 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 we, but yeah. we're down that, we're down those laborers and, and, and that affects helps us that, that, that has an impact on how we execute services from DPW. So I'm yeah. just saying, we need to let's let's look at that and think about it. That number. Okay. I don't know what the no, I don't know what the number is, but we need to look at that number again. Okay. Jenkins and Sony. Maybe y'all want to look at that. We can take that offline, but keep going. I'm just asking. And then the other other expenses. Uh, last year was one point eight million, one million eight hundred six thousand, and this year it's one million seven seven seven. 750 for a decrease of 1.56%, 28,250. And salary and wages and uh, O&E, if you take, combine them all, a decrease of 1.67%, 
So who's going to walk us through this memo? I will, Councilman. It's your floor. You can see my um, accomplishments for 2020, right? Um, we did receive my um, two rear yard loaders with tippers, right? Um, matter of fact, they were very help. One was very helpful to me with my snow removal for the last storm. Um, we upgraded my um, HVAC system here at DPW by using split units in certain areas. Um, um, I was entitled to hire um, four laborers, um, one mechanic for central maintenance, and also I promoted within with um, two supervisors, one for buildings and grounds, um, one for sewer. That's counting from my retirees that I had um, year before last. Um, we upgraded my um, my baseball fields, my little league fields, um, my four diamonds that I'm proud of. Uh, you know, that's um, dedicated to my father-in-law, um, and also um, my fields at um, my fields at McKay Park. Um, we upgraded my um, my camera system, the additional systems for different areas in my vehicle garage to, um, to, to, um, that I could watch, you know, we watch over them a little bit. Also, and for the, but, you know, for things that I'm asking for, for 2021, okay? Um, continue beautification by, um, I know, you know, because of the pandemic and things, we didn't get to um, plant any trees last year. But I also, um, um, but I do want to put to that accomplishment over here. Um, Garden Nanny that helped me beautify um, West Palisade Avenue, bring that up the snuffs, um, my safety complex, and also in front of my um, city hall. Um, so that's part of the accomplishments. But I still want to, you know, get back to my trees um, because we are Tree USA. And you know, I'm a firm believer in trees um, of um, helping the environment with pollution and different things like that. Um, um, updating my um, my time uh, well, putting in a time clock in my department here to help me with my accountability. Um, that way, we're not you know we're not we're not running into any um, hiccups about. My supervisors are doing it by hand, and sometimes mistakes are made. But with with I, if I had a, you know, I'm working with Sonia and Daria um, with upgrading my um, my time clock here for accountability. Um, also, um, want a small basket truck, you know, a small packer. That way, um, I, I have better ways of controlling what's going on on my avenue in my business district uh, um, of garbage and things like that. You know, so it's like I said, during the virus right now, my guys are doing that seven days a week to, um, to control that. I'm also upgrading my, I have a Johnson sweeper here. It hasn't worked in about three, four years. I want to trade it in because the smaller sweepers I have here I think I'm more designed for parking lots and things like that. They're constantly breaking down, but I want to trade off that Johnson sweeper to get an Elgin sweeper with a, with a pusher. That also helps me with my leaf season. That if you know with my accomplishment, we completed, um, we completed my leaf season earlier this year, um, but that would also help me be more proficient with my leaf pickup. Um, um, vehicle washer. Um, that's another thing that will help me um, maintain my vehicles. The, um, the I, I don't want to say beautification, but to give a better presence of my vehicles and my department. Um, other things here. I'm also seeking um, a grant for 
automatic trucks um, that, you know, that seems the world is going over to, to um, that's more environmental friendly for pollution and things like that. Um, and then, you know, we would use those trucks as um, automated trucks to, um, well, to do the same thing my one arm truck is doing. Mr. Mr. Jenkins, could I ask you a question? Sorry for interrupting you. Yeah. Sir. Have you looked to have uh, electric or no. hybrids, no, some kind of trucks there yeah. that because no. they don't give out emissions? Yes, sir. Um, those are, can those we look are, for those kind of uh, yeah, those environmental are the, those, trucks? Yeah, that those way? are the ones. Yes, those are the ones. They're automated, but they're um, they're electrical trucks. They're electric trucks. Okay. Oh, that we had in this grant from last year. Um, we're looking in it. I put in for the grant last year, and we also put it back in this year to get two of those that'd be just like my automated trucks that I have here now. Uh, Ms. Jenkins, also, is the staff well aware of idling and not yeah. idling trucks? Okay. Yes, yeah. no longer than, no longer setting for five minutes. Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. Um, ongoing process of baseball field maintenance, um, like we did last year, we, all, we want to, um, have we have a, we have we want to have a contract out for a vendor to maintain those fields that we already have that we just re um remodel re remodel and things we want to look for a vendor to do that for us um so, um i think we want to renovate my cafeteria my cafeteria we want to make that into a training room so we would have to re also remodel that, but we can't do none of um, no trainings right now because of the pandemic, and we can't have a whole lot together. But that's something that look that, that I want to look into. Um, 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 me and Sonia also talked when I first met her about um, upgrading my central maintenance um, with computers. We need to come into the 21st century with things like that because um, we're still, I think we're still behind here at, at DPW where my mechanics um, need to have computers and go and I was sending them for training with using those computers and different things. They know how to use some, but they need to be more they, and they need to have computers that when I do hire a supervisor here, that they also would be able to use those computers to diagnose problems um, with my certain vehicles here, which I'm with. Um, and then also I would be sending them out for, I try to send them out for, um, for extra training um, for that. Um, as you see, we already talked about my, my um, mechanic one job. I got six labor. What, what I what I want to do and what I've talked to Sonia about is potential, you know, hiring six laborers, uh, potential um, part-time laborers as the, um, with long-term to looking, them, looking to hire them full-time. But what that also did, I, you know, me as being from Inglewood, I, I walk around Inglewood and I see young, young men that I think with potential that I've saw grew up and coming from recreation that I saw that, you know, that I've seen these young men that need jobs, they have families and different things like that. It would get, you know, it would give them opportunities of six months to, you know, to get their CDLs or they could look into, you know, looking to come down, come into DPW and finding a job here in the city of Inglewood, we, you know, so we could, so we could, you know, we could, we could help the, we can help my city here. That's one of the things I want to do. You know, it's 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 hard. You know, times are hard here now, but it also helps me with my you know my summer help, and it also helps me that they it, it shows them things of DPW. It helps them create a better stand uh, a better stand for themselves that they could you know that they could that they could see some hope. Some some kids don't see no hope. Right, I I want to produce something that here at DPW because some of my guys that are here did start at recreation, did back in the day they did have a um, 
a program like that here where we had them, you know, six months with the opportunity of becoming full time after those six months. But that give them time if they don't have their CDLs, that gives them time to get the CDLs, that give them time to see what the job entails. And that also give me a, you know, that give me a good um, picking around or what to pick for the hire for some of these jobs, uh, some of these job openings that I have here and stuff that, that you know, those are some of the things. So, so I, Mr. Jenkins, what, what are you, what are you going to name this program? Because, you know, obviously you're talking about six people, part-time laborers, they're going to be temporary laborers and with the, op, with the, with the option potentially, right. As I understand mm -hmm. it to become full-time yeah. employees based on a certain criteria and you, you talk about the CDL license, are we going to sponsor them for those licenses? How does that work? Are we going to sponsor them for anything as part of this program? You know, I, I understand it's at the infancy level right now. You have to decide how you do that. So um, just, I, th I think it will be interesting to have this conversation down the road again to see how it works out. What's your plan? Um, Councilman, what I plan is by them having a job, right? Or having a job it gives them money to help them get their CDLs, right? Some of them don't have the money to, you know, to get that. But also what, um, you know, training. I, mm -hmm. My thing here is that if they, training's my pet peeve. Um, a lot of the guys here, um, you know, I know you know Josh Yushan that came from recreation, right? Once they got, once they received that, received that permit, right? They came to me, which I was a supervisor then. And I could, you know, my all my supervisors here have class B. They know the pre-trips, different things like that. Just gonna be asked on that test, right? They can't they can't really operate my vehicles until they do get that actual class B air brakes with hazmat. Oh, it's not hazmat, but class B air brakes. Um, license. So my thing is, you know, with that I could, we could help them down here they, to, to obtain those licenses and help them. Some things, schools, they still probably have to go to school to do it. But some, um, what I what I've seen that school doesn't teach them everything. I find out that the CDL school wants you to keep coming back, keep coming back, keep dumping money into it. When you, Sean and Josh came here. I showed them things that they were not taught at the CD, you know, at the school, and they passed it the first, the first go, the first time going through. So, you know, it's just things that my guys down here, you know, we we, we would try to help them through that process. Gotcha. Yes, ma'am. Judy. I love I love what you what you're saying. I think it sounds amazing, and it's what we should be doing for our young people or, or our older people. Is it possible, Sonia, that we could uh, find a grant for something like this? It seems like just an amazing thing to do, and uh, it, it's something that just sounds to me that it's got the makings of a grant application. Uh, we could certainly reach out to our grant writers. Um, however, I think it's pretty, it's a pretty easy program to try to initiate in the past what I've done in other municipalities and I happen to be a product of something like this, where, uh, where I when I was in school getting my MPA, uh, I had a township sponsor me in, in, in doing my last six months. So in exchange for the credit, I, re, you know, um, they paid for the class and I was there and I got the experience. So this is very similar. So as a municipality, I think this is a really great opportunity to instill a program where we could mentor two people in that year. Um, they go through the schooling um, and that we provide the, the CDL uh, funding for those two applicants and it's a yearly thing. Um, and we uh, allocate that in the budget. It's a, uh, you know, CDL, I want to say, is what, around $2,500, Edward? Maybe more, yes. about, about more so, right? Yes, yes only the, like the, the issue sometimes is, is the attempts at, at getting it done more than once. But I think that what, what Mr. Jenkins was saying is that if we could um, take them under our wing and sponsor them, train them, 
uh, teach them the inner workings and then prepare them to take the exam during that year, um, that would be a really great program. And I certainly think that uh, we have that, that within the budget to do so uh, and start that programming. I love it. I hope you do it. Um, and I hope if it works in the DPW, it's something that we could expand to other, you know, other departments. I think uh, our town would benefit greatly from something like this. Thank you, Mr. Jenkins. Yes, ma'am. Anybody have any questions for Mr. Jenkins? No, nobody? So uh, is there anything? Oh, go ahead, Mayor. I'm sorry. No, no, please, Ken. So is there anything additional you need uh, to help with uh, snow removal, since that's one on everyone's mind? Like, like, is there anything you wish could have happened over the past two days? I mean, I think you did a fantastic job. And the department did amazing work. Was there anything that you wish you had that would have made things better? No, no, sir. With my new city manager, I got, you know, I received everything I need. Um, I'm, I'm being honest with you. Um, with her riding around with me, looking to see, and she, she asked those questions that you asked. She gave all that to me um, um, with, you know, plus some. And, and um, um, the, the, like I say, the things, the thanks go to my guys and my city manager, and you guys, and my, you guys, my city, my mayor, my council, that those things happened this time. It, it, it wasn't unexpected like we had a few years ago. And, and I kind of got a little hammered, but it was okay. This one was expected and it was taken care of. And we're still taking care of it because still we, we're still removing um, overnight. Um, as we speak, probably for the next um, the next couple of nights, we'll still be removing from my business area. Um, also, in my fourth ward, they did some removal today. Um, as much as we can, you know, we're removing. My my guys are still working around the clock. That right now, I'm sitting in here with you. When I leave you here, I'm going out because we have to get set for my removal on East Palisade Avenue for the night. Um, into the morning. So every, mostly everything that I asked for, you know, I got thanks to you guys, my city man, my mayor, I got, I, I received from you guys. So I don't have no problem. Well, let, let me, let me ask a stupid question. And, and someone might have been playing a joke on me years ago. Are there machines that gather up the snow and melt it and it just comes out the back as water? Yes. The dragon. <laughs> the dragon. Do, do we have those here? We had one. The dragon. But we ran into big problems with um, DEP, 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 yep. The DEP, we're doing those things. And my, my, my residents, you would have been getting calls because it melts it, but they don't feel, my residents here don't feel, they, they don't feel comfortable with that at this point, right? So um, I have that. I also have a, a big snow blower that goes on my bucket loader, which, I don't, right now I'm not comfortable with using it because every time we use it with the snow getting wet and caught up in there, every five minutes I'm bringing that back, having to unjam un it and then put it back out. So I, I feel like the best way to do this here, the old fashioned way, like we're doing it now with my bucket loaders, with dump trucks, bringing, gathering the snow from the areas, bringing it to my yard. And if you look at East, you, know, you look at my business area this morning, all that was done the old fashioned way. Um, okay. We're still maintaining it. And, and, and anything that can help on the dead end streets? Because I know that's always the, the last of the last. Um, what we usually do there, well, a lot of them like Brick and Hall, we usually have to post Yeah, those. yeah, that's, that's the one I was thinking yeah. about. <laughs> we have to post those because, you know, my residents there, they stand those apartment complexes. And we have to post one side one day and another side the next day. And then we go in there and we get it out. That'll be happening probably, hopefully Friday. Um, one side will be posted on Friday, then the other side will be posted on Monday. And we go out there and we bring that. We and, bring. and they're not supposed to be parked there, but they always do, right? Yeah, they're, they're parked there, so covered. They're not supposed okay. to be parked there. So, mm, we, we and, and I saw that um, Brinker Hop's on the capital improvement list. Is that going to help with snow removal? 
I think or not, it's not going to make a difference. It's not going to make, I don't think font, it won't make no difference. For, for we can't cost. put heating coils underneath it. No. It's, it's not going to help with the parking situation, that's for sure. Yeah, okay. All right. I'm grasping at straws here, guys. Help me out here. Yeah. Yeah. Councilman Hamer, were you motioning? You had something to say? Well, well I interrupted Mayor oh. Wild, so yeah. Go ahead. Oh, Wayne, if you'd like to go, Wayne. No, I'm, I'm, I'm fine. I, I'm good. You you started and Ken interrupted you. <laughs> okay. So um, it's, uh, I think the young lady's name was Deborah. She called about three times, 24 year resident on Brinkerhoff, and she reached everybody in city government. Um, and it's good that she's got the head of DPW, a councilman from her ward, and the mayor of the city all vested in this. Um, just kudos to you, um, Ed Roy. Eagle Paint called just to tell me what an extraordinary job you did. Just an extraordinary job. I just want you to understand. I've never gotten a phone call in the middle of a snowstorm like this. And he just wanted the, the city's mayor to hear how appreciative he was. He's a big proprietor. He's right in the cusp of everything in the central business district. So kudos to you. Um, one of the things that I wanted to get a sense, if I could, was the vendors that are used to supplement your work. Is it possible, and I know there are union concerns and a lot of other concerns, is it possible for us to find local blue collar vendors, whether it's gardening, shoveling, so that the monies that are going into people that are going to do the work to help as an adjunct, I know how you deploy everything and so forth, will actually come back to some Englewood proprietors. Is that um, something that can be looked into? I mayor, most of my... Um, mayor, if I may. Okay. Yes. The issue with, um, as I had, uh, uh, and Ms. Marin yesterday asked the question with regard to shopping local, uh, per se, is that we have to go through the bidding process because of certain thresholds. So if the uh, aggregate in the commodity um, or the vendor is substantial and it goes above the pay to play, then we do need to go out to bid. Um, so if snowing services is going to cost the city of Englewood uh, anywhere between 17,500 and 40,000 or, or well, now it's 44,000. We do have to go out to bid for yeah. that. But so they, could, they could bid on absolutely. this. Absolutely. That's good. But, absolutely. You know, so maybe, I, you know, again, it's under your purview, Sonia, but maybe we should try to go out to bid and reach out to local vendors and ask them to participate so that at least they know and feel that we're vested in, in giving them a shot. Edward, when do we go out to bid for snow removal? Um, uh, it's out now. It's on the contract now. I think I have right. to check Yancey, but I think that um, this is the last year. And okay. I think me and Sonia already had already talked about some things about snow removal and snow plowing and things like that. Right. Uh, so, so we'll be looking into that um, going forward. But I check with Yancey and make sure the um, good mayor, 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 not to cut you off, not to cut you off, but we do. Um, um, I I know I guarantee you seventy five percent of what we do here, even if when we go out to bed or or, or when I go out for quotes, um, uh, a lot of my vendors here in town, like um, um, Cousin Tree, um, um, Brenda's under the, I think Garden Nanny Brenda, she's under the threshold, so we don't worry about her. Um, um, a few of them do bid or do we do get quotes for it and I do give try to do that um as long as it's as long as it's legal. Um good. Yeah, Thank long you. As it's legal. And then just two other quick things. I'm also a fan of uh those stipends. I think that's a wonderful uh, program. Um the local proprietorships like Blue Moon, I'm on an email chain and I know Miss Rousher from the chamber and a lot of other local proprietors. I get photos maybe every other day now of businesses that are piling up garbage and they're under commercial contracts and it just becomes an eyesore and a fight between proprietors. Um, are you engaged in any of that, Ed Roy? Is that something yeah. outside? We, um, well, when, when we went over, Mayor, when we went over and looked at it, it was full to be the, the vendor that supplies their containers and things. It was full to get them, I guess, separate containers um, um, to 
to probably cut down because what is, what the problem is everybody's trying to put in the three or four containers that's there. Yeah, end up on, even when we had the incinerators there, the same thing was happening, right? It was, you know, just people were too, sometimes too lazy to put things where they supposed to, where they should be. Um, me, Walter, um, we're really, we were looking into that, looking at, still looking into those things. But it, what it also is, is holding those proprietors um, accountable for those things that they should be accountable for. We we will help, right? But they but this, they need to be held accountable to um, to things that they do. If you're throwing things on the ground and different things like that, then I'm getting calls from residents that that, that they yeah, they should be calling me to stay behind certain places like that, where rodents and different things like that go into those bags and cause. You know, it causes problems. I don't need right. those problems. They they need to be held, and me and Walter on making those proprietors accountable for what do you know for what they do, or working with Carol um, with doing that. Thank you, Edward. Mm -hmm. Anybody else have any questions for Mr. Jenkins? Mr. Jenkins, just a, a, a comment. Uh, don't insert yourself too much into you know those the things that those proprietors are supposed to be doing because that's their responsibility and if it if it goes wrong it certainly will get uh, left in your lap so uh, you know set the boundaries and uh, make sure you do all of what you're supposed to do and uh, make sure the proprietors do what they are supposed to do and and are held accountable for you know making sure that that area is is kept the, kept looking the way it's supposed to. So one of the uh, things that I heard you say, and uh, it had to do with you know uh, Mr. Uh, Rosenzweig asking if you had everything you needed, and you said that you did. So that means that this wish list that you've sent to us can go away. So That's I'm it. really glad to hear that, and um, you know I'll just you know take that as uh, gospel. And uh, I'm, I'm also incredibly glad to hear you say uh, that you're uh, mm -hmm. looking for develop, looking to develop the homegrown talent, and uh, you know provide opportunities for uh, young people, men and women, in uh, in town, in the city rather, to uh, you know supplement your workforce. So that's a, that's a big plus. I, I really look forward to seeing that program take off and uh, at the you know, CDL sponsorship and mentoring that, that you and the city manager spoke of, uh, I think will make a world of difference. And like Ms. Marin said, uh, that's the that's a practice that should spread all throughout the city in every department that we have. So uh, thank you for taking the lead. And if someone else is doing it in a smaller way, thank you for joining them. But, you know, I, I look forward to real good results. Thank you very much, and, 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 and to Mr. You doing. And, 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 and to your point, Mr. Hamer, uh, I've encouraged them to look how we could do that with fire and police, and we only have those conversations during the budget as well to grow that hometown talent, give these folks an opportunity. That's why we need to have a recruiting process as 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 well as you know making sure that people understand these these departments and. Uh, understanding that they could have a good career here um, if given the opportunity. So, you know, I think there's going to be more to come on some of these things where as we have more budget meetings, we'll be talking about talking to those department heads about creating that kind of environment where people, local talent, could try to seize these opportunities. Absolutely. Now, um, another um, last thing that I want to say before we close off, um, 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 I'm looking forward to meeting with um, Sonia and um, pre Council President about my seniors. Um, so that's another thing, you know, that we'll be talking about in the future about um, right. providing uh, 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 you know, another service and I well, think that's going to be a whole that that's going to be a whole program that we're going to come up with, and we talked about it a little bit last night. But for our seniors, and just helping them ex expanding on what Mr. Jenkins is already doing, 
And, um, you know, I think it'll be a positive thing. It'll be a very helpful thing. Uh, we got more seniors than we, than we know. And I think we'll do that. And with uh, Sonia's help, we'll also get that good morning program rolling to, to make sure that they're safe. We'll be waking them up um, and, and checking on them. And then we'll, we'll do the garbage and we'll do the uh, recycling and some other stuff. And, and quarterly, we'll just come up with a good plan and then we'll communicate it to them. It's all about service, right? Providing yeah. service for the people of Englewood. And we got, a, we got a senior population, an extensive senior population that we need to help out. So, you know, I think these, these are good things for all of us to work on and to work on together to, to, to have a very successful year, I believe. Council President, there's, there's one yes. last thing I just want to mention. Uh, mm -hmm. One of the uh, things that uh, Sonia mentioned is, uh, you know, communicating out of the things that are being done in town. And, you know, a, a lot of DPW comes in contact with uh, the residents of the city more than any other department. And uh, it, they see things that, that uh, could uh, be done to make the city look better and people <laughs> feel better about where they live. Uh, so perhaps uh, we can incorporate some of the things on a seasonal basis into, uh, you know, newsletters and, uh, my Inglewood and and whatever communications uh, projects that uh, the city manager comes up with, and uh, start helping people understand what they need to do uh, as far as lawn maintenance, and then it lightens the load on code enforcement, uh, you know, leaf pickup, you know, snow removal, you know, just things because people don't come and don't necessarily get a house with an instruction manual on, you know, what they should be doing to uh, keep up their property. And uh, some of it is, is, you know, is obvious, but some of it, people bring other habits with them. Uh, like the trash cans that you mentioned, you know, leaving them sitting out, out front as opposed to taking them to the side or back of their homes uh, or wherever. Uh, but those kinds of things, you know, on a periodic basis, you know, we, need to help people, you know, know what, what's expected of them. So uh, maybe we can start getting some of that information uh, out of DPW and sharing that with the residents so that, you know, we can make Englewood shine a little bit brighter, a little bit brighter. It, Councilman Hammond, to your point, um, what I'm going to ask Sonia to encourage the department heads to participate in my Englewood. People should hear from them. Uh, this is an opportunity for them to speak and, and to let people know that, you know, uh, what they're doing and, and do their outreach through, it, through that way and through other ways, you know. And so um, and maybe we come up with, uh, maybe the city comes up with a newsletter quarterly. Um, so yeah. what I, I would propose is that let's get, well, I will, I, I'm, I've, uh, this is what I've done typically is a quarterly report, a quarterly yeah. newsletter rather. So what I would uh, typically do is gather all the information, any events that are happening within that quarter. And the first new newsletter I'll put together is for the spring. Right. How about that? Yep. No. That's okay. fine. That's fine. And then I think all the department heads could, you know, get a little blurb in my Inglewood. Um, and I, I think that would be helpful as well. So the, we, we got to communicate as much and as often as possible about the think the operations of the city, things that are going on. So people have an opportunity to take advantage of what's going on and they know what's going on. So I think that's a good, that's a good thing. Mr. Jenkins, thank yeah. you. The snow is waiting. I appreciate you, man. Getting that, getting that out there. It's not easy. Um, and I, I see that uh, you are working with chief sufferance team yeah. trying to move vehicles so that the, uh, you could plow those streets, as you told me, curb to curb. Yes, sir. Uh, and, and I like that new garbage truck that you had out, that new packer, as you call it. Yes. Very powerful thing. Yeah. So we, we thank works. you for we thank you for that. Get some rest, be safe, and then we're gonna let we're gonna let you go. All right. You guys have a good night and nice meeting my night, my new council. Yeah, you guys have thank a you. good night. Thanks again. Thank you. Good Thanks night, for Edward. Giving thank us, you. Thank you. Thank you. Wish list. Okay. Yeah, it's gone. Ah. <laughs> I put an X to it. Yeah. Thank you, everyone. All right. Bye-bye. Thank you. Um, now we Ken, I looked up.
I looked up your uh, the uh, sorry. I looked up the uh, information you wanted. It's seventy percent is residential, and twenty nine percent is is industrial, commercial, and one percent is vacant. No. Okay. My memory served me correctly. Yes. <laughs> Sorry. All right. So so now we're gonna we're gonna open this up, Nancy, I believe, to the public. Yes. And uh, they have uh, two minutes and to address anything that took place tonight, whether it be the municipal court, the health department, or DPW. Those would be the topics. Sonia, you'll probably be the one being able to respond to them uh, because the department heads and folks who participated are long gone. So sure. go. So, uh, anyone wishes to speak, please raise your hand. Uh, buttons at the bottom of the, uh, oh, there you go. Uh, Diane Jensen. Hi, Diane Jensen, 589 Ridgeland Terrace. It was a very wonderful uh, collegial meeting tonight. And all I want to say is with respect to vaccines um, and other programs, build it and they will come. Thank you. Um, only two other members of the public. Uh, would either of you like to speak? Please raise your hand through the button at the bottom of the screen. No. No. Oh, well, I think we're going to have a short night tonight. I guess we can move to adjourn. Uh, one, one question, please. Uh, yeah, yeah. This is for the CFO. Uh, Michael, what did you say was the uh, net change to the budget for DPW for this year? I heard 1.67 somewhere, but I just yes. wanted. Okay. That's right. And it's a decrease. That's a decrease of uh, about a hundred thousand dollars. A hundred. Yeah, I think he he said it's a decrease of 124 thousand. Right. That's uh, what Michael well, said the, it's down from 124 thousand. That's the salary and wages. Salary that's, and wages. That's right. actually 3.4 percent, but the total expenses is mm -hmm. 1.6 is. Uh, under about a hundred thousand. And uh, Sonia, is, is it are those numbers uh, carried somewhere on a summary sheet with the year-over-year -year changes? Yes, they are. the The worksheets, if you go to towards the end, uh, yep. middle, um, there is the. For example, uh, the their entire their title City of Englewood budget slash revenue preparation worksheets. So there's a since 2016, you'll see the change over there. And then all the way at the bottom, there's at the end of the page, there's a control. The control will tell you exactly what was spent up to, and this sheet covers you up to January 13th. So that is a pretty good picture of uh, what, we've, what we've expended for 2020. Uh, Michael, do you wanna to add to that? Was I muted the whole time? Yes, you were. Yeah, probably. Oh, <laughs> you were just don't say anything. You were at your best, Michael. I'm reading the whole time. I'm muted. Uh, I, said, I only, I only took a, I only took a third of the CFO classes, so I do know oh what I'm gosh, talking about to an extent. Yeah, Fran <laughs> just texted me. I'm like, oh boy. <laughs> I was very impressed with your comments. Thank you very much. Yeah. I, I sent an email at like 6:30. It says yeah. it breaks down. It. Yep. It breaks down the to what I all the numbers that I said before yeah. for the total for DPW. Yeah. For and that government. carries every, every one of the 2.5% increase for health department and the 5.69 for the court and the 1.67 for DPW. So they're, they're all listed in that summary? No, the summary was no. just DPW. Yeah. I took, just DPW. Because they, they, they have multiple accounts. So I wanted to make it easier to see the total. But, but as, as Sonia said in the, budget in, the booklet, in, the, yeah, in the booklet, it says there's a couple of different spreadsheets that show each department's total what they spent so the what. total appropriations uh excel sheet right okay that will tell you what the what the percentage difference is from 2020 
until what what is being yeah. recommended. Right. So, so it's one one point six seven. Yep. Right. Yeah. Sounds good. Down down uh, ninety thousand two fifty. Okay. Yep. Okay. Move to adjourn. Move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Good night. Have a good night, everyone. Good night. Good night, everyone. Take care. Have a good night. Good night. Good night, everyone. Thank you. Let's do this again soon. <laughs> good day. Yep. Good night. Ron, are you often? Am I on mute still? No? No. <laughs> good night. See you tomorrow. Good night. If I could get out. <laughs>